Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We're going to have a fun show. Dr. Mark Spares here. He's a cow vet, he's a dog vet, he's a vet. And we're going to talk about bloodborne diseases in dogs, things that ticks can give to your dogs, things that fleas can give to your dogs, how to prevent them, what you can do to treat them, how you can work with your veterinarian, all the above. Stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Mark Spare. And y'all have seen Dr. Spare on the show prior talking about anaplasmosis and different topics, and you're gonna see him a bunch more um, whenever we can get him on the show because Dr. Spare is one of those special people that, that has the passion for veterinary medicine, the passion for for being a servant leader and uh, just a special human being. So we get to have him and pick his brain and and share some time with you, Mark, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. Thank <laughs> you. So let's talk about what we're gonna talk about is is bloodborne pathogens in dogs. And whether it's the cow dog or your bird dog or just your pet, these dogs get out, they get ticks, they get fleas, and we can have diseases. Yep, absolutely. Um, and, and Dr. Thompson, I, I know we've talked about it before, but ticks and talking about ticks, you have to be careful because this is a topic that will really suck you in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but uh, let, let's good. get started with one um, about Lyme disease. Yep. So when we talk about Lyme disease, Lyme is a bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi. And Borrelia uh, burgdorferi is a spirochete, similar to like our thoughts about lepto. Um, it's kind of a here and gone type of pathogen. Uh, the tick that carries Lyme disease is going to be the uh, the western black-legged tick or the deer tick. We might talk about it. Commonly seen back in Chicago, the Northeast, a lot, a lot of Lyme cases back in the Northeast. We do have some of that here in Kansas. And, and that tick is, is kind of like our, our Lone Star tick. It likes to be in the woody areas. All ticks are kind of ambush driven. They, they really can hang out in, in the brush and the, and the leaves on the trees and then grab a hold of our, our dogs and, and in this case, even, our, even us. And Lyme Questing. disease is something that we can get. They do quest. They, they actually, adults have eight legs, we say. It's actually six legs and then the top two legs next to their mouth are called howler's organs on the end of their feet and they, they hang on to the leaf and they, they hang out there and wave their howler's organs to try and uh, detect and then grab their next victim. It's amazing. Uh, it, it, it's actually disgusting is really the, the <laughs> word. I don't mean to correct you, but no, it, it is really, really unbelievable um, and, and how sensitive that those ticks can be. Uh, now, Lyme disease, again, is, is one that, like we talked about, like lepto, can be here and gone. So 
uh, things that you might see in your dog with Lyme disease uh, would be a, a dog that all of a sudden um, maybe doesn't, doesn't have an appetite, a little more lethargic, um, a dog that specifically, and you can kind of picture this, wants to walk on eggshells. And so, so the immune reaction to this, to this disease is, is a, uh, uh, produces a sensitivity in their legs and in their feet. It's almost maybe to project it on them would be like when we have our legs asleep and we're just kind of walking gingerly. It's kind of painful, uh, but, but dogs specifically, it, it looks like walking on eggshells. And then the lameness might shift from front leg to back leg, left leg to right leg. You'll see some swelling in those limbs, but the, the lethargy, lack of appetite, shifting leg lameness, um, fever, certainly a fever. And, and these are the signs. Then you say, okay, hey, I need, to get, I need to get Bonzo into the veterinarian here. Gotcha. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the treatment for Lyme's, and then we'll jump into Ehrlichia. Perfect. You're watching Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mark Spare. We'll see you after these messages. Hey folks, welcome to our Cattle First Minute, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. And today, we're gonna to talk about clostridial vaccines. And one of the things about clostridial vaccines is many times it's called, in layman's term, black leg or, or something of that nature. But when you hear someone say, I'm gonna give a seven-way black leg, that is the vaccination for clostridials. Now, all of us that are watching this show are also vaccinated for a clostridial that's very common in our environment, called clostridial tetani and that is tetanus. So tetanus is a clostridial vaccine that humans and cattle uh, alike receive. Make sure that we vaccinate our calves that are gonna be housed on uh, pastures that are high with the black leg disease with a seven-way clostridial bactern. We also wanna make sure that we utilize that bactern when they're going into a grow yard and again at, and at the weaning process. When we want to use clostridial tetani or tetanus vaccines is if you're going to use the technique of banding to castrate bull calves. Always use the tetanus toxoid. Clostridial vaccines have been around forever. They're one of the most effective vaccines that we have in the world and they work really well. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mark Spare, and we're talking about blood-borne diseases of dogs. And you know, we just talked about Lyme disease. So if, if we do have those symptoms, we go to the veterinarian, is this treatable? That's an excellent question, and, and yes, it is. And, and I, I know we struggle with uh, treating Lyme disease. I'm not, I'm not going to be an, an MD, but we struggle diagnosing and treating that in people. Um, but if we can get it diagnosed in our dogs, um, we can get them on amoxicillin, doxycycline, and we, can, and we can treat them and help our dogs to feel better. Um, whether we clear the disease or not, that's another question, more, more questions for another time, but we can certainly help them feel better. Good. Let's talk about Ehrlichia because it, it's another one of those that we get tested for when yep. we're going on the annual examinations of our dogs and the physicals. Yeah, excellent. So, and, and, and the nice thing is uh, one of our commonly used diagnostic tests, we have Ehrlichia, we have Lyme, we have an anaplasma, a couple species, and then we have heartworm, which we can get to later. But when we talk about Ehrlichia, we're talking about two species, um, multiple sub subtypes, but uh, Ehrlichia canis and Ehrlichia Ewingii, okay, and that's not a curse word. I, it's not a, it's TV appropriate. It's, so, Ehrlichia ewingii. I don't know what it is, but I don't want to get it. It just sounds thing, bad. The good thing is on Ehrlichia, and I don't want to make this into a talk show, but we only have to worry about this in our brown dogs because it's carried by the brown dog tick. <laughs> well, then that's you okay. know. There you go. Don't worry but about the, black dogs, white dogs. Don't worry about. It. The, well, that's good to know, but. 
the brown dog tick will jump on a white dog. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> and that, on you. Too many jokes this morning, <laughs> but so so it is Ripocephalus sanguineus that, that's our, our main carrier. Of this uh, um, the the dermocenter ticks can also pick this up, I believe. But uh, when we, we talk about that, this this is common in the south where that tick is common. Southwest Kansas has this tick. Uh, the the brown dog tick is one that can get into our homes. And so when we talk about tick prevention uh, and we're in those areas, preventing ticks on our dogs is really important for keeping the brown dog tick out of our home, right. which can live in our home. It's a one host tick, so it means it preferentially as a larva and infant adult likes dogs and, and not just brown dogs, but all dogs. Um, but then, so as far as Ehrlichia, what we can see in our dogs, and it takes, you know, maybe five to 24 hours to transmit this disease for a tick needs to be locked on and feeding. Actually has three phases of clinical infection. So in the acute phase, that's the phase I'm talking about. The fever, the depression, the lethargy, lack of appetite, vomiting to a certain extent. Um, and, then, and then that lasts anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks, probably a couple of days. The middle phase is really the scary one because in that phase, the, uh, we call it the subclinical phase, but the dog actually shows no outward signs. So if you're out with, with Bonzo again and you're hunting and, and then he gets, picks up a tick that has Ehrlichia, transmits Ehrlichia, and you see him not acting well, but you haven't been, you're not hunting, you're not going out, he, he kind of gets over it, and then, and then he's fine. And in that time, though, the, the bug, Ehrlichia, is still working in his body, keeping some of the important blood components down that play in clotting, um, keeping him really re not, not able to recover, can hurt the kidneys. And then the dogs that are in subclinical phase two can either clear it on their own or they'll progress to phase three in which what we call clinical ehrlichiosis. Um, and, and those dogs can go downhill really quickly. Yeah, they have a trouble oxygenating and... and uh... Absolutely, you can get into full-blown bone marrow suppression. Um, we saw this disease, was uh, another name for this would be, and I'm gonna butcher it, but I think canine or lichio uh, pancytopenia. Yep. It, it happened, we started seeing it in dogs, working dogs, military working dogs that would come back from Vietnam. And so, so those dogs then, just like you said, became... Um, no hypoxic. red cells, no white cells. No way to get just oxygen. Blowing them down, and then and then in some cases bleeding out from from spontaneous hemorrhage or bleeding. Cool. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Mark Spare on uh, bloodborne pathogens in dogs. Hey, folks! Welcome. I'm here with Holly Martin of the High Plains Journal, and she has some exciting news to share. Yeah, we're having Cattle U here in Dodge City on July 31st and August 1st. It's going to be a great event, and I, I am so thankful that you would bring it here to Dodge City in Kansas. Yeah, it's it's the heart of cattle country. We were going to have a great speaker lineup. Just just as you know, you're going to yeah. be a part of it. Well, I, I I looked at the speaker lineup, and I was just blown away. It's going to be something there for everyone. Absolutely hope that people come and, and spend two days with us learning. And it's not just for feedlot operators. No, no. Cow-calf producers, um, stalkers, uh, there's a little something for everybody. Yeah, and you're going to have a trade show with it? Yeah, trade show. Great information to be able to learn in the educational sessions and then go outside and be able to find partners to work with. Come network with a bunch of cattle producers here in Dodge City. We're all going to be here and it's going to be a great time. Thank you so much, Ollie. Thank you. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. You spent countless hours building a strong operation. But when it comes to trichomoniasis, the odds are stacked against you. It takes just one infected bull to take down the whole herd. Damage could include open cows, lost pregnancies, and lost profits. The good news is with TrickCard, a herd doesn't have to feel like a house of cards. 
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mark Spare, who is a veterinarian here in the, the Manhattan area. He also works with me here at Kansas State University and we're very blessed to, to have Dr. Spare and his time. Um, he's usually working on cows, but he's a tremendously talented uh, veterinarian that, that covers all species. Uh, you know, when we, we get those Ehrlichia dogs and, and the Pancytopenia and things like that, the, the, the big thing is is that when you start in the summertime, dogs not doing right, yep. not eating, not drinking, weak, get them to your veterinarian. Yep. Yep. Because it's a simple test, and when we catch it early, we can, we can turn these dogs around. Absolutely. We've got great tests for this. We can, we can use, again, doxycycline. Um, amoxicycline for the Lyme disease. Uh, we've, got, we've got excellent treatments for these dogs and we can really make a difference. Cool. Let's talk about um, another one that comes from a different uh, host or a different vector, but let's talk about heartworm. Heartworm. Let's talk. Inappropriately named, really, because what it should be named is the pulmonary artery worm. Okay, yeah, because it doesn't go in the heart, it goes in the pulmonary right. artery. That's exactly right. Uh, but but when, when the worms die, they do fall back into the heart, and that's where I think we, we give its name. But, uh, but heartworm, again, the way we want to think about this is another preventable disease. Yep. Um, we've, got, we've got excellent kill back and kill forward uh, uh, products for this disease. Again, on, on, a, on a very good test that we have that's included uh, in many cases with the Lyme, the um, Anaplas, and, and Ehrlichia. Uh, and as long as we stay consistent on, on our products, we're great. We do have a treatment for this, not a death sentence. Um, but Diroflaria imidis is the actual bug, lives symbiotically with a, another pathogen, so called Wolbachia. And Wolbachia is generally included in these adult infections. Uh, we use our products. Our products are actually generally killing the adult uh, or the immature adult phases of this, of this protozoa. So once a mosquito bites um, our dog, can actually bite you too, but you don't develop clinical signs, bites the dog, the, the protozoa migrates as an L3 through the tissues to the bloodstream, goes to the heart where it can mature into an immature adult and then an adult. Then our products kill those, kill those, uh, stages. Okay. Gotcha. So we let the mosquitoes bite them, we let it get into the dog, the products kill it, no clinical signs, no heart enlargement, no nothing. Um, what, what, what we run into an issue is when we don't consistently use those products, what can happen is the, the immature adults get into the heart, into the pulmonary artery, they can reproduce, and, and our test actually then detects adult female uterine antigen. So, so it's an antigen test on, on, our, on our lateral flow or our SNAP assays. Um, as they reproduce, they fill the bloodstream with called microfilaria or L1s. Those microfilaria then picked up by a mosquito and then taken to another dog. So in areas where this is extremely prevalent, and, and I would generally say that it's, it's present in most places in the United States, yep. whether higher numbers or low numbers, that's fine, but, but generally present. Um, a, an infected dog is a risk for an uninfected dog because there's mosquitoes all over the place. So. So we get uh, into a new end dog, the microfilaria goes into the mosquito, molds into an L3, and the cycle starts all over again. Cool. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll do a wrap up with Dr. Mark Spare. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity 
as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Mark Spare, who's a veterinarian here at Kansas State University, and he's a private practitioner here in the surrounding area. Tremendously talented veterinarian. If you need one, call him. Um, and and uh, let's wrap up with with heartworms there. So. They get into the, the pulmonary artery yep. and, and they can develop into worms. Absolutely, so they can reproduce and they, they would look like uh, certainly large, hopefully nobody's having spaghetti this afternoon, but they can look like large pieces of spaghetti, large worms yep. in that pulmonary artery. That artery can get really thick and then what we end up with is pulmonary hypertension. And, and then it constricts constricts the space for that blood to flow through from the heart into the lungs and so then the heart begins to enlarge uh, and, and that is really one of our main signs. If we find a dog that is heartworm positive, next step, let's take an x-ray. Let's see if we're to the point that, uh, that we're, we've got issues with heart enlargement and we're going to need to deal with that. Otherwise, uh, we can start dealing with treating that infection um, with an emeticide. That's the the uh, drug that we use to, to kill the actual uh, adults. Awesome. But, the, the, you know, when we, we get into these, like Ehrlichia and, and Lyme's disease and heartworms, we're, we're really talking about flea and tick control. Yeah. And, and obviously we want you to work with your local veterinarian. They know the best plans and methods. And, but different parts of the world have different needs, right? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about, about coming to school here. Uh, we get we wrote a lot of health papers for dogs actually going to the Caribbean. So dogs that had lived in Kansas going to the Caribbean, some of my experience in Russia, seeing just different, uh, different pressures. And I think, I think in terms of pressures, uh, disease pressures in different environments. And when we, and, and, and those pressures can be different in, in Pottawatomie County all the way out to Grant County or Thomas County in Northwest Kansas. But still, if we're in an area that, that we know is, is heavy with ticks and there's a lot of ticks in the environment, we might honestly think about using two methods, a topical and a systemic method of tick prevention. Because these, these diseases are preventable, we've got products that are affordable and, and long lasting. Um, and and I, I would recommend in some of those cases to use two different types, at least through the summer months where those vector seasons are the most. As far as heartworm, you know, we need to stay on that product pretty much year round. As far as tick prevention, we need to stay on those products year round. We don't see ticks every day of every year, but we see ticks every month of every year. 
and you just don't know, you don't, you can't get a forecast for a tick forecast. There's ticks out there, and if it warms up, if it, uh, if the sun shines for a little bit of that day, I guarantee you they'll be out looking for a blood meal. Awesome. Wealth of information. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. We'll have more from Mark Spare on the show uh, down the road. Work with your local veterinarian. If you want to know more about what we do at DocTalk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Mark Spare, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with AML and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.